This is a peppered moth, caught recently in a garden moth trap. This species is perhaps best known as, literally, a textbook example of evolution by natural selection, all because of what happened here in the UK during and after the Industrial Revolution. In the early 1800s, this pale form of the moth was the only one commonly known. But over the following decades, a melanic or dark form was found in increasing numbers until it seemed to make up the majority of the population in industrial areas. You see, smoke from factories had blackened the tree trunks on which the moth sometimes rested. This meant that birds could spot the pale form more easily and they were eaten, while more of the dark form survived to reproduce. In this way, selective feeding due to camouflage, or a lack of it, had changed the population as a whole. Then in 1950 came the Clean Air Act. This reduced smoke pollution and tree trunks became lighter again, so in terms of numbers, the pale form gradually overtook the dark once more. A change of colour is actually a very small change, but as Mark Ridley puts it, if the process that operated in the 19th century in a single species of moth had been continued for the thousands of millions of years since life originated, much larger evolutionary changes could be accomplished. But is that statement justified? Let's think about what actually happened. The bird selective feeding hadn't changed the colour of individual moths, of course. It had only changed how many individuals of each colour existed at any one time. The colour of the moths is controlled by particular genes, so natural selection had changed the frequency of those genes within the population. Some would say that is evolution. But when it comes to natural selection, the clue's in the name. Nature selects from what is already there. The process was acting on an existing pool of genes. After all, the melanic form already existed, albeit in very small numbers. And as quickly as the population changed in one direction, the situation was reversed. Natural selection had simply removed harmful variation, the colour most likely to make the moths easy prey at a given place and time. For organisms to develop new features and evolve into completely different types of organism requires something different, not just enough time, but the production of brand new genes. As Kurt Wise has written, natural selection involves rather small changes, usually dampens change, and works most effectively in taking out harmful mutations. Natural selection seems to act more to prevent organisms from changing, as suggested in young age creation theory, rather than facilitating their change, as suggested in evolutionary theory. There's an added twist to the peppered moth story. In 2016, researchers found that the rapid rise of the melanic form was more to do with a transposable genetic element than it was natural selection. These so-called jumping genes are mobile lengths of DNA that can insert themselves into other genes, thereby causing mutations, sometimes harmful, in this case beneficial. And that sits very well with creationist models about the immense genetic complexity with which organisms were endowed by God at creation. Such genetic elements may help to explain how adaptation and even speciation could have occurred so quickly after the flood, but only within the original created kinds.